Hi, Cynthia Allen. I am here today to bring you Dr. Turner Osler, and I'm pretty excited to do that. I first want to say that uh, Dr. Osler's company, the QOR360, is a sponsor of this year's summit. And if you decide to purchase the chair that he's going to be talking about, we would be so appreciative of you purchasing it through our link, which will allow us to get some credit. So that link is qor360.com forward slash question mark ref equals 39. This is also in the description uh, of this session, either whether you're watching it on Facebook or YouTube, that link is also there. And of course, you can see it across the bottom as well. And Dr. Turner, Dr. Oslo, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hey, well, good morning. I'm Turner Osler. I'm the uh, guy behind the design for QOR 360, the, the company that makes chairs that with the objective of helping people sit in a balanced way and move while they're sitting. Um, and Cynthia gave me a chance to talk for a little while. And I, I thought I might tell a little bit of the backstory about how I got involved with this anyway, because I was just a normal, mild-mannered academic trauma surgeon before um, I was introduced to the idea of active sitting by Yvonne Jolie, a, a, a Feldenkrais trainer in Montreal. And I was um, I was having an FI with Yvonne when um, you know he unawares uh, said sit down on this thing and and had me sit down on an object that I couldn't see and. He was trying to introduce me to the idea of action, um, uh, of uh, a balanced posture that can move in any direction. And, um, you know, and rather than try and explain it to me, he just uh, explained it to me by showing me. And I, I was immediately smitten by just how great it was to sit in a, on something that made me, put me in charge of my balance and posture so that I could um, really kind of felt like floating. And I was, uh, I just thought it was so terrific, you know. And I, I glanced down at the at the label on the chair, and it was made by a company called Mishu in Germany. It was all wood, um, and uh, um, the rocking mechanism was made out of four precisely milled pieces of wood. It was, it was really a elegant design. So I uh, I got one of the Mishu chairs, um, and um, I thought it was terrific, but. Because and I showed it to my friends in the in the martial arts world and in the in the Feldenkrais world and everybody thought this is great we want one, but it was so expensive that I said well you know I'm sure we could figure out a way to make one that was less expensive, and it was a an act of hubris on my part because I don't know anything about design or or manufacturing certainly, but um, we I took a deep dive and I was lucky enough to. Uh, be um, befriended by people in the maker community here in Burlington, Vermont. And we managed to go from this rather complicated uh, four moving pieces design that um, was was used by the Mishu chair to, you know, a single shape that um, handled all of the movement. Um, and it turns out that this shape is a, um, a new geometric shape um, it hasn't been described before. It's the volume of intersection of two cylinders. You can kind of think of where my fingers would overlap. Um, and um, so that, that volume of intersection of two cylinders gives you this shape. And if you put it on a surface, um, it'll rock. And if you put another surface on it, it can rock. And so if you put it between two surfaces, you get rocking in all directions, rather simply and rather inexpensively. So we were able to um, manufacture this shape a little bigger out of polycarbonate, um, which is, um, it's the same kind of plastic that your eyeglasses are made out of. It's indestructible. It'll be around long after I'm gone. And this turns out to provide, you just put it under the seat pan of a chair and you get motion in all directions. And it turned out to be a good enough idea that the Mishu people in Germany now use our rockers because um, it lets them make a affordable version of their tippy chair that first enchanted me. So you know, that's the backstory about how we came to design our chair. And 
after that, it's been mostly a matter of, you know, trying to let the world know that you don't have to sit in the kind of ergonomic chair that's been foisted on us by the ergonomic industry for the last 50 or depending on how you count, maybe 100 years. Office chairs are a big business, as, as you may know, billions of dollars a year. Huge companies, you know, Steelcase, Knoll, that are, you know, with valuations in the billions of dollars. So it's, it's rather hard for them to walk back the story that they've been telling. You need a headrest, a backrest, an armrest, a footrest, lumbar support, or you can't sit. All of this is false, of course, because we all have our own internal support system. We have our skeletal system that we're quite accustomed to because we've been using it since we crawled out of the womb. Um, and we're very good at balancing ourselves in gravity if we just give ourselves the chance. And that's exactly what one of our chairs does is by putting um, a seat pan on something that lets the chair move in all directions. Now people are really in charge of their own posture. And we, we've done this experiment many times where we take our chairs out on a sunny day on Church Street in Burlington, Vermont, and just let people come by and try them. And, it, and it's astonishingly uh, consistent that you know people sit down on our chairs and for a moment they're a little shocked that they're going to be in charge of their balance. And within moments they get organized. And then within a minute or two, their sternum comes up and their shoulders come down and their head comes back so it's balanced on, on uh, C1 and C2. And you know people very quickly revert to the natural posture that you see in small children, um, you know, where they're, they're balanced on their uh, ischial tuberosities, on their sitting bones. So the whole process of people figuring out how to sit on our chairs in gravity really happens without any instruction or um, any effort. People just uh, seem to take to it quite quickly. And surprisingly, the effects are, are durable. Um, I, I, I remember quite clearly um, one day when we were showing our chairs off in, on Church Street in Burlington, a, a young woman, you know, maybe in her early teens, um, was just sitting at the periphery, um, uh, kind of blissing out in the sun, you know, two minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, not even looking at her phone, just, just like rocking around on our chair. And um, she got up and walked away. But she got about 10 steps and then she turned around and she said, you know, I think this makes me walk better. And that was really a awakening moment for me is that our, our chairs weren't just letting people sit better on the chair, but they were actually um, a pedagogical device helping people find better posture and adopt better posture um, in their other activities, for instance, in walking. Um, by, by making the chair pan move smoothly in all directions without resistance, you're, you allow the pelvis and the spine to participate in sitting. And it turns out that the pelvis and the spine are largely what's responsible for walking. You know, we, we think of people walking with their legs, but really the, the power, elegance, and grace for walking are come from the, the hips and the spine. And we know this because you know, people congenitally born without femurs, without legs, um, can walk perfectly well uh, on their ischial tuberosities because walking is really happening in the spine and the pelvis. And our chairs allow people to basically walk in place without having to think about where they're going. They can be in constant motion without uh, having to have the noise and confusion of a treadmill. Um, so the design of our chair is pretty straightforward. We, we, have, uh, we have the rocker that allows the seat to move and then, you know, we picked a minimalist sort of a seat so that people wouldn't be uh, tempted to lean against anything. They really have nothing to lean against um, except gravity and their, their own um, uh, nervous system's response to gravity. So there's a gas cylinder that allows us to adjust the height. And there's the rocker that allows the chair to move in all directions. And a seat that's padded enough that we think it's comfortable but not padded so much that people can't feel their ischial tuberosities. We feel it's important that people be able to feel their connection to the chair so that they can get organized on top of their pelvis in a way that allows their spine to 
uh, assert its normal lumbar lordosis and gives the head some frame of reference about where it needs to balance. It needs to balance over the ischial tuberosities. So you have to know where they are. You have to be able to feel them. So our chair is firm enough that we allow people to feel their ischial tuberosities without being uncomfortable. We know our chairs require some work because people tell us that um, they uh, get tired in the first 15 or 20 or 30 minutes of sitting on our chair for the first time. It's proof that the core muscles that are involved in posture um, are engaged as soon as you're responsible for your own posture. But what we found is that people very quickly adapt to our chairs and within a few days or a week or two at most, people are able to sit comfortably all day on one of our chairs because their core musculature has um, hypertrophied, has gotten stronger to the point where you know, they're able to take charge of their posture all day long. When people lean against the backrest and the armrest and the footrest, uh, you know, their core musculature really goes dark. There's, they're not, um, there's, there's no, um, no need for the muscles to fire. And this is a profound change in the way human beings exist. Um, our hunter-gatherer ancestors for the last three million years didn't have chairs to lean against. And so when they wanted to take time off from chasing rabbits or running from hyenas, they adopted what was called uh, active resting posture, which almost always was squatting. We know this because we can look at uh, fossils um, from uh, our, our ancestors and see that there are uh, facets that have been um, pushed into the tibia that show that a lot of time was spent squatting. And we can find these same facets in the, in the tibias of European populations from uh, well, up until about 1600, showing that uh, in Europe, people mostly squat until around the 1600s. It's only recently that we started sitting in chairs um, because only recently could we manufacture chairs inexpensively. And really in the last 50 years, it's become um, the posture in which most people spend most of their waking time. The average American sits between eight and 12 hours a day. This is not what the human physiology and anatomy are designed for. And there are serious consequences that come with using a body, the body that we're gifted, the body of a hunter-gatherer, as a cubicle uh, inhabitant. And the consequences are that we lose on average two life years to sitting disease, a combination of obesity, diabetes, and heart disease. Um, additionally, we have a back pain epidemic that, uh, well, 80% of America at some point in their lives will have back pain severe enough to send them to a healthcare practitioner. So the chairs that the ergonomists have been basically hawking for the last 50 or 70 years haven't changed at all. They've added more chrome and, and uh, softer seats, but the basic construct of leaning against the chair so that you don't have to exert yourself um, is a profound failure because it results in atrophy of the core musculature and um, loss of uh, body integrity and um, really worse posture even when not sitting. So we think that active sitting will be an extremely useful adjunct to most people's lives. We're quite aware that not everybody wants to take up the effort that's involved in sitting actively because it really does involve effort. We've shown this in the lab. If you take people and put them on a regular chair, measure their expired carbon dioxide and their inhaled oxygen and compute how many calories they're burning, and then put them on one of our chairs, you can show that the basal metabolic rate, the rate at which people burn uh, energy, uh, goes up by 20 or 30 percent. Not a huge change, it's not like running, but it multiplied by 8 or 12 hours a day, it amounts to quite a step up in the number of calories burned. And this is what our anatomy and physiology really expect. Uniquely among our primate cousins, the bonobos and the chimps and the gorillas and the orangutans, those other species are quite 
uh, well suited to sitting around all day without consequence. A, a chimp can do uh, basically no work whatsoever while sitting around in a zoo. Even in the wild, chimps you know, don't work very hard. They walk less than a mile a day and spend their day you know, feeding and cracking nuts. And at the end of a long day of eating nuts, they you know, crawl up and sleep in a tree. Humans, because we're hunter-gatherers, require metabolic activity at a higher level in order for our physiology to remain healthy and vibrant. So we have this uh, expectation that by getting people to move while sitting in one of our chairs or some, some other active sitting uh, contrivance, we can really improve the, the health of the nation. Um, um, I see a, a question pop up. My left side is where my hump is, and my left sacrum is what hurts every time I sit down, a pinch. Would your chair help me? Hard to know. Um, um, I am um, without, you know, a physical exam and so on. Um, and, you know, I, so my, my background is as a physician for many years, and so I hesitate to just jump in with um, uh, recommendations. But I, will, I can say this to almost everyone. I, I mean, and, and it's, you know, people send me their MRIs and their CT scans. And so, so sometimes I can, you know, make uh, more nuanced judgments. But this is a general statement is that almost every problem is made better by moving. You know, any kind of arthritis, uh, all of these things are basically made better by shifting your posture moment to moment. Um, will our chair help? I don't know. You know, um, it's always an experiment and we always want to hear back from people. And if it works, that's terrific. And yeah. if it doesn't work, send it back. We're, we're happy. We'll, we'll pay the postage both ways. We're, we, we want you to be happy with what we've created. And we've been a big help to a lot of people, but it surely can't be the solution for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Chris also shared earlier that uh, they have scoliosis, uh, maybe from maybe from trauma as a child. Um, so there's a lot maybe going on there. Right. And, oh, and I, I, love how you, I love how you encouraged a courage just to try it and send it back. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, if you're getting a pinching feeling when you sit, it's possible that the chair you would be able to discover with the chair, oh, hey, when I'm in this position, that pinching feeling goes away. And when I'm in this position, that pinching feeling is there. It's possible, but of course, not, not 100%. Yeah, and scoliosis is pretty common. And we've had, we've, um, you know, had many people with scoliosis right to say, this is terrific. Um, you know, it's one of the few things that has helped with my scoliosis. So, um, you know, it's, um, I, I, and, and I kind of view this as a research project and I view everybody who sends us email as collaborators. You know, this is how we learn what this thing is useful for. I, I love this story, I can't help telling it. You know, just because you invent something doesn't mean you know what it is for. <laughs> and Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. Somebody asked him what it was for. And he said, I think when the weather is inclement, you won't have to go out into the storm to hear the opera. You'll be able to listen to it in your own living room. You know, so Bell thought he had invented music streaming because he didn't have the idea of a switching network that could connect any one of 8 billion people to 8 billion other people because that was unthinkable. So he thought he'd invented music streaming. It turns out he was right. You know, music streaming is a thing now. But in the moment, what he had invented was a way to, you know, call somebody down the street. Um, so I kind of think what we've invented is a way to help people burn more calories and be metabolically more healthy, and also to find action, to find a balanced posture that, you know, may elude many people. Um, our chair kind of it's tough love. It kind of enforces the idea that you're responsible for your posture and you have the ability to, in fact, you're required to, to search out many different postures, you know, switching millisecond by millisecond. And people are, their nervous systems are very smart. If a, if a new posture is better, they go there. And if it's worse, they go back where they were. It's so-called, in mathematics, it's called a Markov 
chain Monte Carlo simulation, where, where you just explore a space of many things, in this case, postures, by trying one out, going to the better one if it's better, going back where you were if it isn't. And pretty soon you find at least a local maxima, you find a posture that really works for you. So we have somebody who's very interested in buying the chair, is wondering the difference between the models. Sure. Um, so we, we, uh, we constructed a couple of different models because we've discovered people are different. Um, so the one that uh, I'm sitting on right now, um, that we, we call the aerial, and it's um, you know, kind of lightweight, and it looks a little bit like a chair because we put a little back on it. You can't lean against the back. It's mostly just a target to help people know where to land when they're sitting down because you know that helps them find the, the middle of the chair and immediately come into a balanced pose. It's quite responsive because the, 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 um, the motor mounts that hold it together are made out of uh, natural rubber and they're, they, they provide almost no resistance, but just enough uh, torque to keep the chair centered when you're not sitting on it. I, I like this one a lot. We have another one that we, we call- I, I say I like that one too. I have that one. I actually really like that little piece on the back mm -hmm. a lot. You know, it, 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 people really like it. We have another one that we invented a little bit earlier, which we call the Newton. Uh, Newton's third law of motion, the body in motion tends to stay in motion. This is kind of a bench uh, setup with a, I don't know if you can see kind of a curve front to back. And we find that people like this a lot because they can perch with their ischial tuberosities right in the ridge line of this thing. And because the seat slopes away, it doesn't impinge on their hamstrings when they move forward. And because the seat slopes away backwards, it doesn't impinge on their uh, on their coccyx when they rock backwards. So people with those kinds of issues, the, uh, their hamstrings and their, and their coccyx, this kind of keeps them uh, suspended in space, but they still allows the ischial tuberosities to, to uh, provide information when sitting. Also, you can, you can swing it around 90 degrees and sit on it like a horse. And uh, <laughs> astonishingly, equestrians love this thing because it recapitulates the movement of sitting on a horse because you know, its center of rotation is about where the center of rotation in a horse's chest is. In fact, we've got pictures of people who put saddles on them so that they can, you know, practice their posture and riding technique in their living room when it's raining or at the office when they can't get to the barn. So I, I hadn't, again, you know, you, you invent something, but you don't know what it's for. I had no idea questions would be so in case they say, they love this thing. And the aerial comes in like a cloth version and a leather version, is that right? Right, no, um, my my son and partner, you know, kind of figured out, oh, you know, some people like cloth and some people like, uh, it's vegan leather so that it's, you know, indestructible and, and you can wipe it clean and so on and so forth. But other people want a surface that breathes. And so we have a, a cloth version as well. Um, it's a, um, so th these, these are the version and it's, because we're a small company, we only have red and black and gray. That's that's pretty much all we have for colors. But, um, you know, maybe one of these days we'll get big enough that we have to worry about having a bigger color palette. But but for now, three seems like all we can handle. Yeah. And Chris asks, how much is the chair? Um, so um, we have a few versions, and they come at different prices because of it's, it's, we charge more for the for the vegan leather than we do for the cloth because it costs more to make them and and uh, but you can go to our website and look around there. They're between $350 and $450, basically. Um, and um, I, I don't, I'm, I've been, I, my son won't let me have anything to do with that because he says, um, I don't know anything about business. So he's the guy who's in charge of the pricing. And I, I have to go look each time myself because they keep, he changes them sometimes. So somewhere between $350 and $450, I think. Okay. And and we're, we're aiming to, to bring one online that'll be, uh, way less expensive, but um, it's often Michigan now with robots trying to crush it. Um, we do ANSI BIFMA testing on all our chairs to be sure they can, 100,000 cycles of dropping a weight on it to be sure it'll last forever. Well, I have to tell you that people pay a lot, lot more for chairs than what you're charging. The, the ergonomic chairs that I've bought over the years, as you know, the price ranges are extraordinary. And I have never been able to afford to purchase the really high, high-end ones, but I have purchased some pretty decent ones, and none of them have been all that helpful. They feel cushy. They feel 
they look great. I think, oh, wow, I'm just going to get to relax and sit here and do my little thing. And then it turns out, of course, that at, you know, the worst possible thing is chair arms. I think right away, if we just got rid of all arms on chairs, we would be so much better off. No, then, less is definitely more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I do think that there's a lot, a lot here of goodness. As you say, it's never going to be for everyone, but there can be for a whole lot of people. And of course, you've got a really liberal return policy. And by the way, if you're part of the Feldenkrais Awareness Summit, the Move Better, Feel Better Summit that's happening right now, there is a grand prize winner based on people who've been entering all the different contests through the summit. So they be the inner bingo and a lot of people enter bingo 10 times, all 10 days. Uh, they've written a poem or more than one poem. They have, uh, they did the movement challenge with the eyes early on. They did the silly little wear the pink glasses uh, thing we did early on. All these people are going into a hat and today at the party at 2 p.m., the closing party at 2 p.m., uh, we will be drawing a winner of that of your chair that you're donating for us, Turner. And I'm so embarrassed I can't be there. I have a lecture I have to give in the math department at the university that I can't weasel out of. So yeah, um, that's okay. We're re we're really excited to have that ending party and invite you to. Join us there if you've been registered for the summit. And if you are have not been registered for the summit, well, maybe you still want to check out this chair and you would purchase it at qor360.com forward slash question mark REF equals 39, which is also on the screen and also in the directions, uh, the description of the video. And that just allows Future Life Now, who hosts the summit, to receive a little bit of credit for that. So we appreciate it if you purchase through that particular link. Turner, is there anything else you wanted to say as you're wrapping up here? No, just thanks so much for giving me a, an audience to, to go off on because um, my poor wife, you know, to, she, she'll be so relieved we can talk about something else at dinner tonight. <laughs> uh, I'm quite sure you have a big variety of things that you all could talk about. But I understand once we get kind of obsessed with something, I can say my husband will be really thrilled when I stop talking about <laughs> Nice. <laughs> well, she's coming up fast. Coming up fast. So Larry's gonna say, "Oh, thank God, we can talk about something." <laughs> uh, thanks. Thanks very uh, much. The poor spouses. Yeah, that's right. We couldn't do it without them, though. Absolutely. Thank you. thank you. Thank you very much, Turner. And we look forward to seeing you guys at the party later. If you're part of the summit. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Cynthia. Mm -hmm.